message today is about knowing God. I know somebody. I know the Lord God. And that's what I want to challenge you guys today with what the Lord challenged Job with. I'm going to read this verse. There's a verse in the Bible where Job is in his mess, per se. He's in his moment. He's in his situation. He has yet to do anything really wrong other than his disbelief. And that's why God asks us not to walk with unbelievers. And I'm going to read this verse for you guys. Um, it talks about how we know God and what measure of faith we should have because before the foundations of the world, he foreknew us. He knew what he had planned and predestined for us. And I want to speak up with you guys about that today. The Lord challenges Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this who obscures my counsel by words without knowledge? Now brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall inform me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who fixed its measurements? God is asking who measured the earth when it was created? Who created this and where were you? Surely you know, or who stretched a measuring across it on what were its foundations set or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together, all the sons of God shouted for joy, who enclosed the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its blanket, when I fixed its boundaries and set it in place with its bars and doors. This is where Job is. At. God is asking and challenging Job to see who created the earth, because if you know who created the earth and you know who laid its foundations and you know who manifests every ounce of it, you know who God is and what he can do in your life. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? You know, I think most of the time we're going to go and we're going to get a measuring tape, a yardstick. We're going to try to determine the details of something. But the way God works, he manifests it and he creates it intricately and detailed precisely according to his plan. He backed the seas, you know, just enough so that we don't drown. He set land in places just so we can, you know, go on vacations and live in certain areas and separated certain parts because he knew there would be division. And I want to talk to you guys about that because I know somebody, you know, you know, because in the Bible, uh, in Psalm 139, 8, God said, if I, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there, which if understood of the place, if you're damned in torment, God is there as well. But if I make my bed in heaven, you're there as well, because God is always with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always be so ever present in your life. And I want to talk with you guys about that today, because there are moments in your life where you feel like they're out of control and you're walking in utter darkness. But God appears and shows up in this life because it's according to the plan and the destiny which he foundation that he found it before earth because he foreknew you before the foundations. And I want to talk about that because we walked with God before we knew God and God knew us. And I want to talk about that because we need to know him now in this day, as darkness shows up, as unbelievers try to convert you into this road and into this way in which God did not plan or set for you. I talk about that in my book, Getting Back to You. There's a moment where I talk about being tainted. Don't allow this world to taint you and change you because you're walking in the light or you're walking with the Lamb of God. There are moments in God where there are moments in God where it will feel like, you know, depression. It will feel like darkness because that is the world telling you something different. That is the world trying to taint you. But renew your mind every day. Change your mind and have the mind of Christ and the mind of God. Because if you do that, you can walk in your destiny and the one that he foreknew you in. No matter which way you go, though, God will never leave you. and He will never forsake you. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, whom I have called. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. Surely my own hand founded the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they stand up together. Come together, all of you, and listen. Which of the idols have foretold these things? You know, God summoned the heavens and earth together. And if he can bring that together, he can bring you together with lightness. And I want to show you all that because there are networking relationships, friendships, you know, that you're building as a Christian and you want to walk in that light and you want to walk with those types of people. And if God can summon the heavens and the earth, he can summon your relationships. He can summon your life in order in order to walk in that purpose that he set for you, in order for you to walk in that dominion that he predestined for you. You know, there are times in life where we think, 
you know, it's out of control. It's out of it's out of our hands. It should not be in your hands. I think sometimes we try to do the working of the plan that God has precisely detailed, but he didn't detail it for you to do the work and it's already planned for you to walk in it. And if you're not walking in it, and it's not that I'm hearing God direct me with every detail because his word is a lamp. That means as I continuously read his word, as I continuously light this path with the stuff that God has given me, he's given you a manuscript. He's given you uh, things that you need in order to walk this destiny, because sometimes we get off track. I'm not going to diminish the fact that you can get off track of your Christian life. And these new Christians need to hear that because, you know, we set up this plan and we set up this thing about, you know, how good everything is. But do you tell them like the, the real like? what happens, you know, sometimes people fall or sometimes things happen in life. And you're like, well, dang, is God with me? You know, when God breathed life in you, that foundation before the foundations of world, that plan that he set for you, that was the beginning part. And as you go with forth, you begin to walk in that way. God begins to set up and lay these foundations that he set in the plan and you walk on them. Now, you may think that you fell off of it. You may think that you fell off. You know, there was a moment just for me, for personal experience, there are moments where I thought like, oh my God, I'm not myself. I'm not doing the thing that I wanted to do. And that's why I got off here. I didn't want to put that on y'all. You know, I don't feel like, I think when people come on here, they want to hear a message of God, but you also need to hear the real deal, Holy Field. Like you, you need to know like, oh, this person is going through this, but I'm still standing strong in my Christian walk in my faith. And of course, people are going through stuff that are Christians right now. And this is where you will see like, I don't want to say the true Christians because they are true Christians. If they got knocked down, they're just, you know, doing their fight. So don't judge someone's uh, fight based upon your fight and saying whether or not it's a Christian or not. But I'm just saying, got knocked down, trying to get back up as a, a Christian and trying to be strong and trying to walk in what he foreknew me in. But in a moment, you, you begin to think like, dang, am I fake? Am I faking it? Am I faking my Christian walk? No, you're walking in what you were predestined and planned to, whether you uh, build this wall or this hardness up in order to walk in it or where, whether you fall and, you know, become weak. In your weakness, there's a strength. And I want to let somebody know that because I had a lot of networking friends and they're kind of like, oh, I'm going to sign off or I'm not going to do this now. And I totally get it. I get it. Rather than hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, or just continuously hurting people. Hi. Hi, babe. Okay. Hi. So yeah, instead of being a hurt person and continuously hurting people, get offline if you have to do that, but come back to God's word and let people know that I'm standing strong in this. I'm, this is what I'm doing. And this is what we're doing. This is, this is what God foreknew us in. This is the purpose. This is the dominion. If God can summons the heavens and the earth, you can summons your life to do what God will for you to do. And I want to speak that message to you guys that are down about it, you know, just to commentate, you know, what's going on as a Christian and how we can walk in that strength and that grace and that mercy and the favor that he's given us by walking in the faith that we have and standing strong in it. There was a scripture, you know, to be the best version of yourself that you can be. But if it's something that you are not hitting or that you're not getting out of life that does not look like what the Bible said or what, what your pastor said or what you thought expected that you might get from reading the Bible, begin to find out how do I get to that life? How do I taste and see that the Lord is good? Because I found out in the Bible, he doesn't, he's not going to withhold good things from us because his plan is good. You know, in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says he's going to give us a good plan and expect it in. So the word is telling us this life that we're going to live. The word is telling us what God is going to give. The word is telling us what he foreknew us in, in the foundations of earth. You have to backtrack and say, dang, am I walking in what he foreknew me in? Am I walking in my best version of Dahlia? Am I walking in my best version of the Flow TV? And if you're not, figure out how you can, you know. Before the foundations is what I'm going to read because this is a great, this is a great um, analogy, a great word about how God has predestined us in Jesus Christ. He has given us the Holy Ghost, and it is a disservice to yourself and the people you meet and the people you come in contact with if you don't walk in this measure of Holy Ghost with the foundation that God has built upon you. And yeah, things happen. I I see it daily. Things happening 
as a Christian and people judging you as, is this a real Christian? Are they walking their real faith walk and things like that? But I know somebody. I know somebody. I don't care what you got to say about my Christian walk. I don't care what you got to say about the anointing. I don't care what you got to say about my spirit. I don't care what you got to say about what I have to say. I know somebody and his name is Jesus, God, the Trinity, the Holy Ghost. And because I know them and he foreknew me before the foundations of the world and he know me as well. There's nothing you can say about it, especially when I'm walking in it. But I want to read this word. I don't want to get too. Hoo. OK, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. For he chose us in him before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless in his presence. In love, he predestined us for adoption as his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the beloved one. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Keep it with you. Wisdom and understanding shall walk with you daily. And he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to bring all things in heaven and on earth together in Christ. In him, we were also chosen as God's own having having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything by counsel of his will in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be for the praise of his glory and in him having heard and believed the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, you were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, who is the pledge of our inheritance and to the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. You know, God has set us with to be his possession in the end times. And this is something to shout about. This is something to be glad about with what he left us. He summons all of that. He brought everything together. He measured everything intricately with detail so that at the end, his sons with the Holy Ghost and the salvation of God, as we are saved, as we walk out that predestined plan, what he's given us is the materials and the necessities, the protection he supplied every need so that we can walk in what the Bible has given us today. Read it. Walk the way, be the light, stay away from the darkness. I know somebody, whether it's reading his word, talking to him, listening to him in obedience, having faith in his word and what he said. I want to thank y'all for joining again. Much love to you guys. Thank you for joining the Flow TV Humble to Bold podcast on Spotify and the merch on www.dowyshapon.com. We have the Greater Than sweatshirts. Much love. Be blessed. God's love. Perch merch.